ويريكم آياته فأي آيات الله تنكرون Like all living things, plants reproduce to ensure future generations. But since plants can't move from place to place, they need a way to transfer pollen from one plant to another. Pollen is basically a sperm for the plants. It is a fine powdery substance, typically yellow, consisting of microscopic grains discharged from the male part of a flower or from a male cone. Each grain contains a male gamete that can fertilize the female ovule, to which the pollen is being transported. In some of the plants, the reproduction process is done by wind. It means the wind carries grains of pollen from one plant to another. Therefore, the plants adapt themselves to this process with the calculations they make. And some of them transfer their pollen to other plants through insects. These types of plants know how to attract the insects towards themselves. For this, they use variety of methods. They recognize what the insects love. After knowing which type of nectar and fragrance are pleasant to the insect, they try to produce that fragrance and nectar through some chemical process. They are doing this exactly at the moment they want to attract the insect towards themselves. They also know which flavor is pleasant to the insects and they try to provide all the wishes of the insects. This is just because they want to attract the insects so that they can transfer their pollen to the other plants through them. And if they couldn't attract the insect by one method, they instantly choose the other methods. Moreover, the plants also calculate how much pollen and which distance and which duration can be transferred by an insect. And they produce the exact amount of pollen according to their calculations. They also take into account the probable constraints and barriers which can occur in transferring of pollens from one plant to another. And they try to reduce those barriers as much as they can, so that the exact amount of pollen can be transferred in exact duration and exact distance. Undoubtedly, the insects themselves are also playing a significant role in this system. Of course, such a scenario is not rational, because this scenario undermines all the rules of logic. None of the mentioning strategies is possible by an ordinary plant because they cannot determine the direction of the wind, they cannot measure the time, they cannot plan out any strategy for attracting the insect, or they cannot forecast the barriers in transferring the pollen to the other plants. It is obvious that a creature without intellect cannot do all these calculations, because they don't have the knowledge to accomplish all these extraordinary activities. They even don't have the correct information about their own selves. So who is responsible for these precise calculations which facilitate the reproduction mechanism in plants? If we assume that they are doing it instinctively, it wouldn't be correct because it still cannot provide any explanation for the harmony between the wind, the insect and the plants in this mechanism. In fact, the harmony which facilitates this mechanism to happen needs a designer. A designer who created the plants, the wind and the insects. A designer who knows the needs of these creatures very well. A designer who designed and controls this system.
وأوحى ربك إلى النحل أن اتخذي من الجبال بيوتا ومن الشجر ومما يعرشون ثم كلي من كل الثمرات فاسلكي سبل ربك ذللا يخرج من بطونها شراب مختلف ألوانه في شفاء للناس إن في ذلك لآية لقوم يتفكرون It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who regulates all the activities of the plants and inspires the insects to follow his command and facilitate the process of reproduction in them. Furthermore, the male and female genders in the plants and the role of wind in the reproduction process of plants which have been discovered recently are actually mentioned in the Quran 14 centuries ago. <laughs> فأخرجنا به أزواجا من نبات شتى وأرسلنا الرياح لواقح فأنزلنا من السماء ماء فأسقيناكم وما أنتم له بخازنين 